hi everybody uh, good morning here in india and uh, it's an evening over there uh, in uh, jaya's uh, side of the world uh, so we are talking to jaya uh, prakash who is uh, the ceo founder of i compass based out of santa clara in the us uh, so they have an interesting solution which is all about uh, creating compliance as a service especially for uh, products out there in the cloud and uh, we will touch upon how you can use uh, how small medium sized companies can leverage uh, uh, i compass's capability to you know solve the challenge of uh, you know ensuring compliance as a service so that uh, the owners uh, are not uh, they don't have the nightmares of okay are they gdpr compliant are they soc compliant are they cis compliant or oasp rules Uh, do they have the checks for the sufficient vulnerabilities in their product and solutions so uh, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to do a quick uh, product walk through of i compass's capabilities in this area and how it's going to help sc- small medium companies have a good night's rest when it comes to compliance uh, so over to you jaya so uh, in this uh, part 2 of the series so uh, please walk us through uh, what is their uh, latest in your uh, stable and uh, stack of i compass offerings uh, that we're going to touch upon today definitely thank you thank you kiran um i'm happy to start sharing with you guys what we have built so far uh, and you know what's coming down the pipeline so 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 once you log in the first thing that you see is the overall summary and uh, in the summary you actually get to kind of stay on top of things in terms of you know all the cloud resources that you have in place and if you have any attack surfaces that are you know actually uh, public facing and you know they're uh, accessible uh, out to the public you can actually see a quick uh, view of that and so, you so can sorry actually, to interrupt you what could be an attack yeah. service here uh, so public saving internet uh, and uh, ports opened uh, so you, are, are you calling those as the attack services or yeah uh, exactly okay. so anything that is uh, if, if you're if that endpoint is publicly available okay and uh, anyone out from outside can reach it uh, without you know uh, any kind of interruption uh, uh, it could be because there is a port open it could be 80 port like a web port or an ssh port 22 or you know uh, let's say if you're running some database so so it will be some database related port so it could be any of those things and we catch all of that so if if uh, we find anything that is uh, accessible then we we show that and and I'll show you in my uh, in the cloud resources tab you can actually go into the details of it and see which particular resources are uh, in that particular state okay. and um, we also do a summary of your violation so we are checking about 313 different checks um, and we, we found 137 violations so you know we show you kind of how they distributed these checks are based uh, sorry again an interruption yeah. so these checks are based on control objectives set by few of the standards that you're comp- checking against right exactly exactly right so again uh, given we are a compliance as a service we want to take away the burden for you to know what different uh, compliance policies are actually let's say for cis level 1 or soc 2 or hipaa and we do the implementation of the, the that automation and we are making those checks and we we run those scans on your system and we are able to get back information on if any any of those are violating those rules and you know then you can actually will show you how you can remediate that as well so we actually break it down by different services as well so you can see where the issues are if it's in security groups or vpc or iam you can actually get all of that information right at at your fingertips uh, right in the summary page So first thing I wanted to show you as you mentioned so there the is a violation services. even in the cloud watch uh, for instance uh, Ajay so that you showed me yes, there is uh, yes. something on the cloud watch mm-hmm. also so yes. because that's showing in mm-hmm. red uh, your correct okay so if it is if you uh, there are certain standards where you are um um asked to configure cloud watch for certain uh, checking certain things if you have not set it up then we flag that as a violation as well 
correct correct yeah. and i see 36 and of them are lambda know. services right uh, of, of this exactly exactly so if if you look at this so if you click on that and you see the attack surfaces you can actually see what exact you know resources there are and you know it's a database surface is a compute surface it it gives you that information as well and you can actually see clear all filters and you can see uh, all the different things that you have here uh which irrespective of the region they are in they are actually going to be displayed to you so you don't have to go and try to find uh what's actually you know in which region because if someone has mistakenly created a resource in a different region you don't have to you know obviously go in and try to find that out because we you know find that for you so that's a again this is uh, in that sense interesting and uh, we believe that you know our our customers are able to keep track of things especially in their dev uh, accounts and and make sure that they are not you know doing things that they are not supposed to be doing so let's say for example we can open up this particular thing and you can actually get a, details of the resource id and you know and and what kind of resource it is which region it is from so you can actually get information on all of that stuff uh from here and uh no, what we are actually building to, here uh, sorry go ahead. just to interrupt what is this resources by service for uh, one is lambda i understand other are those are the so these im roles these oh, okay. im roles is im policies is our s3 buckets so cloud formation so you can okay. actually see it here to like if you, you want more details on like actually see the breakdown with the names okay, here okay 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 those are the icons yeah okay, so you can okay. actually see you have sqs queues sns topics rds snapshots how many of them are there you can actually see all of that details here yep so by resource yep and what we are doing here with the cloud resources we were building uh a resource audit uh mechanism because if you want to check the life cycle of a resource when it was created why it was created and then you know if you, when was it actually you know terminated and with cloud it's easy to create resources but it's hard to keep track of them and uh, we can make that happen for our customers and that could be a a compliance requirement for certain aspects and and we are you know going to be making that available uh sometime soon So one of the uh key I would say hurdles for companies who want to do for like for example SOC compliance would be how do they get their you know accounts into SOC readiness and we help in that in multiple ways and first thing we have uh various policies that we're checking for for SOC 2 so we actually kind of identify them with the compliance id so they are mapped uh, to the soc2 compliance uh, identifier so you can actually see some uh, we found 17 three buckets uh, which have violated the secure transport policy requirement so you can actually click on that and you can actually see here the details of that violation so first thing as you'll notice you're g- given a lot of other metadata you're also given a remediation step link which if you click on it you will see you'll get information on uh, which is our knowledge base site where you can actually you, see you'll get a cookbook or a details. recipe to say how to fix that problem exactly so how to fix the problem in a in a simple way first and again programmatically also uh you know that can be fixed up but you know, right now like we have uh, the cookbook part which is going to the console and fixing those things and you also see the failed resources and the past resources and you can see all the f- the ones that are failing and you know uh the the reasons why they are failing you can actually see the region where they are belonging to so all of this you know uh is given to you right away so you don't you don't have to uh like go and scamper and find out what those are and where those are you can actually just go and find you know uh, find them directly uh, since we are giving you the names so that actually uh, is a feature that we are making it available here and let's say in this case the security group 
should not be allowing ingress access to any port and we find that there are you know there is uh, one resources that failed uh, which was this particular resource so you can actually go in there and and find that uh, resource and you can actually you know fix that one so this is how you can actually go through your entire list and we are obviously sorting it by status so if it is failing it's uh, and also if it is high priority we sort it by that and then if it is passing we put it behind and you can actually still see the ones that are passing and you know which uh, service they belong to and uh, if you want to actually share this with your ops team or uh, or your you know uh, devops team or secops team you can generate a report and this is a report i just generated you can click on it and we have formatted it in a way which is easy and friendly for you know uh, especially uh, when you want to generate evidence so once you have actually fixed all of these things let's say you can see that there's a compliance uh, id of cc 4.2 uh, for soc 2 and in that you have all of these that are you know part of that compliance and these two are failing so once you fix these two then now this will be in compliance as well and once you have fixed all of them you can actually get all the passes and this will become your evidence you can submit to your auditor rather than going and collecting evidence on your own manually so we eliminate the need for that you know collection process so that's that's exactly what we are providing as part of this product okay, okay. so yeah so this can and, uh, uh, companies uh, stay on top of the game when, it, when they need to periodically you know audit themselves and provide uh, the compliance reports to the auditors so this exactly. kind of exactly. <laughs> proactively you can generate your audit reports correct and uh, as part of the readiness you also need to actually um scan your devices or at least like your laptops need to be you know in compliance as well so SOC 2 ISO 2701 uh, actually uh, force you to provide evidence on if your devices are actually following the norm so and I can show you what that what that means so we actually have a way where you can install our agent uh, it's an os query agent and that agent will actually generate information on what is your serial number and you know if your disk is encrypted or not and what is the operating system that you're using and you know uh, and when did you start using it and and you can actually see uh, we uh, we support uh, mac uh, uh, windows and linux so we actually get all that information you know directly from your device so you can actually see uh, what what's going on uh, in those devices and uh, if that is they are properly being patched or not if they have not been updated then those need to be fixed and you know you can actually get all that kind of information and uh, we, we we monitor those things and get all the data automatically so you know now if you need to generate evidence you don't have to go go to and ask from each employee if they have done those things and 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 so this pro, is uh, ask them help to companies uh, yeah. uh, sorry yeah, so that's <clears throat> this is going to help companies with their byod readiness so that um, they have yes. all the information in their fingertips uh, no exactly. matter what device they bring into the office correct that's correct this is does this also and, like kind of check the you know, patch levels on those machines so like do they ensure it, it that does Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we we get the information on where they are at. Uh, from there, uh, we can have our security analysts actually figure out if that is in, enough and if they have you know the right patch levels. But that's a good yeah. question. Uh, yeah. yeah. We uh, there is a semi manual process there. Yeah. Correct. So you can so actually yeah. You Sorry. could also have a list of uh, malicious software check also perhaps you know. Yeah. Saying that exactly. these are the allowed whitelisted apps. These are the <laughs> these apps are Correct. not to be allowed. You know that kind of stuff. okay. Exactly. Yeah, please go ahead. And then you can also manage your personnel, right? So these devices are obviously assigned to people, and you need to be able to. And you saw that the the device was associated with a name, and you will see you know who it is assigned to on both places, which is in the personnel page. You will see the associated device, 
and you know you can remove the association or add association uh, basically manage that here or and you can also manage the, the role that that particular personnel is playing so all of these if things the and you can manage is, all of that from here sorry if yeah. this device changes uh, hand uh, in terms of the personnel right. you need to update this here saying that now it's being reassigned yes. to another person correct yes you can do it from here so that's about you know SOC 2 uh, and and also related features that we have built uh, in order for you to be SOC compliant and uh, same goes with uh, HIPAA and ISO 2001 uh, for ISO 2001 is much larger uh, the number of checks that we are making here are uh, many many more so we are doing 112 checks here so we are we are making you know a lot of different uh, we check for a lot of different configurations again this is much uh, more detailed uh, and much more harsher regulation and uh, it has a lot lot more here so yeah again this is also made in a way simple for you to be able to manage because you can then uh, if, if you have let's say there should be no s3 buckets that are open to everyone uh, or any aws user so we found one that is open to everyone so that's obviously you know not a good thing so that's uh again it, it'll expose all of that information to you so you can actually go and start remediating that so that would be for again iso as well so you can do the same thing, which you can generate report for that as well. And that'll, you know, you can pass it along to your team. And we do have a feature of adding your team members, but we only advise that you should add your uh, main managers. Uh, so they have access and they, uh, you know, they can kind of properly. So we have a team feature where you can add your uh, sub users and, uh, you know, uh, uh, non admin users and you can, they can actually go and, you know, uh, see these reports and then share this with the appropriate personnel in your team. So those are uh, those features are covered. And now, so we'll does be this cover about, all the? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Does this cover all the twenty-seven thousand one uh, control objectives that are there, or um, you have uh, in your initial release touched upon right. a few, and the others are work in progress? So, as you know. Any compliance, there is a part process and part automation, right? And the the area that we are covering most of it is the infrastructure side. Any automation on the infrastructure side, we are doing that for you know uh, our customers, and we also help you manage the personnel, roles, vendors, devices, which is also part of the compliance stuff. Uh, right here in in our interface so you don't have to go and and do that separately so we are covering those aspects but we are not covering everything so we, we obviously it's it's not possible to cover the process aspects too much right we can only cover the uh, automation side on the infrastructure side we are definitely covering that yeah okay okay, okay. Right. yep so the next thing i wanted to show you guys is the AWS well architecture framework and if you see there is you know already the AWS architect, uh, well architecture framework is the information is available but uh, how do you know if you're passing all the security pillars if you're uh, actually passing the you know operational excellence uh, or performance uh, efficiency pillar and we we help like in making sure that you are able to kind of do the best you can um, uh, on specifically you know all of these type of you know uh, aspects which are over and above security but this is more to do with you know a general um, uh, best practice that you know obviously aws has found very useful and they are trying uh, and they, they actually have put this forward so that they can help their customers and, and people using their platform uh, to you know manage their uh, resources better so we also provide that feature uh, so we have about 43 checks on that and we are constantly adding to this because we believe we can always improve on all the different things that we can be tracking and, and, okay. and improving uh, 
on the AWS well architected side. Yeah. So this AWS well architected uh, pillars are AWS terminology, uh, which AWS yes. says. Okay. Yes, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Got it. So we'll go next to the web. So uh, this is the web app scanner. And in the web app scanner, we actually cover all the OWASP, uh, more than top 10, we actually do uh, most of the OWASP related uh, vulnerability checks for your endpoint. So this is whatever is publicly accessible. Uh, it could be your web application, it could be your marketing application, whatever you have uh, running, uh, we will run the uh, scanner on, on it and we'll find all the issues and you can just browse, browse through just like the reports that we generate for the uh, scans and we do when we do for your cloud account, you can do the same for your endpoint as well. And the feature that I wanted to talk about next is questionnaire. Uh, this is actually something that uh, after talking to a lot of uh, CISOs and also people who work on the security architecture and who, who are uh, tasked with talking to vendors where they have to give them and basically kind of fill up a lot of questionnaires for them and they have to do this over and over again uh, every quarter uh, or sometimes you know uh, it could be a customer requirement that is coming through to you that you have to keep uh, adding and they are all not always add asking for uh, all of this this different sections that we have you know there are different sections you can fill up and you can actually generate reports for the the ones that you care about the sections or the question that you care about and you can reduce the amount of work that you you're doing um, to uh, stay compliant and, and also uh, do the work for uh, to generating these uh, questionnaire answers for the vendors. So okay, that's... Jeff, uh, one more thing. What is attestation? Yeah. I think I understand all the others typically, but what is attestation? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you... List of all the... So, okay. Yeah. Security certifications, including organization-wide certifications. So oh. this is uh, for your security personnel and okay, also, okay. you know, yeah. Uh, and describe your process for assuring the security of any custom code developed in your company. So, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, we typically- Okay, I got it, got we it. Are got looking, it. Okay. Yeah, How yeah. do you attest so, all the attestation details yeah. that you have- Right, uh, right. With regard to uh, security. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it, okay. Yeah. So this is coming from a, like a comprehensive list of so questions you could even that put, we uh, have been getting. Yeah, sorry, you yeah. could even put your GoDaddy certificates also there, no? Like in case you've got uh, some PKI certificates that you get from them. Uh, right. So, for... so this will only cover like what you, you're just, you're saying that we are doing this. So obviously, mostly questionnaires, when they come to you, you typically are uh, assuring that, hey, I'm giving you my word that I'm doing all of these things, right? So uh, this is not doing any automation. This uh, is only kind of automating your answers and, and questions and answers that you have to provide. As long as you is current, then you'll, you know, that workflow of uh, when you have to send these type of answers uh, will be done for you. So you don't have to, you know, look around different files and, you know, updating and all of that. So okay 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 and i'll quickly touch upon one other thing that we do uh, on top of all this so we believe in you know in actually doing kind of cloud governance because only doing security aspect is not enough we also believe in helping you keeping your costs low so we offer tools to help you understand where you are actually you know, you know mostly kind of spending all your money is it in container service lambdas you know like you actually see the full report on on all different services with different ways of looking at, at that data and then we also generate cost recommendations that we do every 30 days uh, where we run it through a system we have a uh, ai tool that kind of uh, figures out 
different resources and and different ways of saving money for our customers so in in a these three different areas but we are you know, constantly coming up with more but you can right size your resources if you find if you find idle resources we you know tell you you can just terminate them and you can also upgrade instance family so that you're using the latest one and you're getting the maximum out of it so yeah, that's the cost recommendation aspect yeah i think this is a really good important uh, much needed feature because while companies are spending money on their cloud efforts uh, they forget most of the time that they need to turn off unused instances that are not really adding up to their bill monthly bills and break the bank so i think uh, exactly a good one. well feature which actually i think collaborates with your whole idea of rolling <clears throat> cloud auditor cloud architect mm -hmm. and a compliance guy <laughs> all into one exactly one place, exactly uh, because it's very difficult to find uh, all three resources in one place yeah please go ahead right. uh, you, I think I yeah, so I just want to quickly show that we have notifications. Uh, we we have integrations with you know Slack, SNS, Twilio, SendGrid, MS Teams, and IFF, IFTTT. Yeah. Uh, you can actually uh, simply put them through, and and whenever we have any alerts that we send you, they will go to the you know appropriate channel that you are you know using. And, Configured uh, them. That would be. Yeah, and and what we believe in is like you know only charging you for the things that you care about. So we actually uh, allow you to pick the feature that you need and only pay for that particular feature. So uh, you don't have to you know. Uh, so our tiering, uh, our tiers are you know uh, we have light, basic, and pro, and, and that covers you know let's say CIS and and. Uh, cost recommendations questionnaire so we we cover a lot of things and security as well we cover a bunch of things but if you want hipaa soc2 or um, you know iso 2001 or uh, things like that you can actually or, or web app scanner you can buy them separately uh, as needed and then only pay for them when you need it so uh, we you know again we want to make it easy and simple for our customers to uh, keep their costs low even when they're using our tool so okay. that's about it uh jay one question here on the pricing because uh, i understand yes. cloud pricing is very uh, dicey mm -hmm. and tricky with a lot of vendors uh, when yeah. it comes to these uh, uh, per month cloud account when you say an account how, what is the, how many endpoints are covered there how many nic surfaces are covered or like you know what would be the right. breakup of what do you mean for SOC compliance, SOC level 2. Right. Uh, so if you say per account is that, so what what's included yeah. in that per account? Can you uh, briefly walk us through that? Right. So it's $500 per month per cloud account. So in each of our tiers, we allow for you to have all the scans that we're doing for SOC 2 and the features that are available, uh, as I mentioned, managing your personnel, devices, all of that is part of our SOC 2. Uh, module is there and a list of is there a higher limit upper cap of okay uh, more than 5000 devices yeah. you fall into another tier or you know things like right. that right so so we do have a enterprise uh, uh, enterprise pricing model so okay. if it is you know uh, if the number of cloud resources uh, which we define as any compute storage you know, we, we don't count security groups or thing, roles or things like that. We only, you know, uh, look at the resources that are actually incurring costs for you. So which is compute um, uh, and and data stores and things like that. So if that crosses thousand resources, then you go into the enterprise level. And, you know, uh, that is priced separate differently uh, because every time, you know, uh, because we keep scanning your system. So it costs us money for each resource that you have. So we have a, a, a cap of a thousand cloud resources there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So that's all. Uh, that's again, a glimpse of our products. Uh, we have been again, um, we launched seven months ago uh, with our product and, and a lot of our customers have been using this and very happy with it and and we are constantly learning from them and uh, helping them in getting better uh, with their uh, security posture and you know and also in general uh, managing their cloud accounts so that's about it
thanks thanks so i think uh, uh what would so is, this is also available as a white labeled solution right which you could uh, potentially is a white label yeah mm-hmm. with uh, any yeah. vendor's own security compliance yes. uh, solution yeah so so white label is available and uh, it's for companies who have their own customers and if they want to use it for their customers and enable basically these compliances uh, as something that they can now offer to uh, find issues and then also they can then uh, you know obviously uh, charge for the remediation aspects so if you're doing operations or devops for companies and you know they can definitely use and we do have a mssp model a pricing model as well so they can leverage that and they can once they are part of our partner network then they can use this as as a their own white label uh, which will be logo uh, in the reports and, and and even in the site uh, the the logo will be theirs and and you know so then then when they put in front of their customers they can see that it's all white labeled yeah okay okay and uh, so i'm assuming that once you do that uh, you'll be multi tenant on your side so that you would have yes. various integration models available uh, pretty much mm-hmm. to help them integrate in that fashion yes yes okay yeah so what would be uh, the best place to reach you out is it support at icompass.com or help at icompass if people want to know more so about so if you go yeah absolutely so they can go to icompass.com first uh yeah. we do you know uh we have a chat bot there so you can chat uh, a window there they can connect with us there they can also uh talk to us uh through email at sales at icompass.com okay, uh, okay. as well and uh, that will be a best place to reach us and uh, our uh, you know uh, our sales representatives can uh, definitely take care of you take care of you and go okay. through the demo and all of that yeah okay. perfect so okay. Perfect. thank you uh jaya for uh, spending time and walking us through your product so i think it was quite an informative session i think uh, we packed a lot of information in like a capsule so those interested can reach out to um, i compass directly and uh, i think there'll be many such uh, more offerings that would come from your stable or uh, from your product suite so wishing you yeah. all the best in your endeavors and i think uh, the ones that you didn't you talked about but didn't cover uh, as you said perhaps had some customer sensitivity in those kind of screens that you couldn't walk through but otherwise uh, as i understand you're ready from a gdpr standpoint and from a hipaa standpoint also uh, as a product so yes so yeah thank you so, very yeah, much thank you thank you kiran yeah thanks for uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, you know have a good have a good yeah. rest of the day yeah have a uh, stay safe i think in the times of the pandemic <laughs> yes all of us need yes. to be yeah. quite stay safe. home stay um, safe Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look forward to the uh, next session when you have more success coming uh, down with more features uh, down your product line. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you.